Well, welcome back to base camp, WNC. I'm trying to make this thing for a bunch of people ask, ask some questions. So this is going to be how to build a DIY spring box, part of my at least four-part series on this. Um, we'll take you along for the build, but this is basically what you're doing with my modifications of using filters inside to pre-filter your spring water before it ever gets in your cistern tank. So let me take you along for the build and we'll show you how easy this thing really is. Well, here it is. Of course, we're using a bucket. This is a food grade bucket. This had pickles in it. And I guess according to the YouTube guidelines, I can't show the name of the company on it. So I blanked it off. But what we're gonna do in this build, I'm gonna show you how to turn this five gallon pickle bucket and it needs to be a food grade because, of course, your drinking water is going to be involved in it. And don't think the buckets you buy at the big box stores, I don't believe they're food grade. But trying to use one of their lids, if you've ever taken them on and off, gets kind of hard. So we're going to leave three or four tabs around here so it's easier to take off. And I'll show you how to do the lid first. Because trying to remove... These lids, when they're brand new, is tough, and they normally have a little handle you can do it. I've marked about 120 degrees apart or whatever's convenient. We're gonna leave a tab right here, one right here about two inches, and one here. And what I've done is mark them on the outside Now I have my three tabs right here marked. And just for my ease and convenience, I believe I'll use the table saw on the rest of them. Well, what I've done with the saw off, I've adjusted it to be able to cut this much right here. There's my tab marked. I got it marked on the inside so I can see it. And the depth will not come up and hit any other part of the bucket. so. Let's see what we do. Granted, as dangerous as a table saw is, I feel better with a table saw than I do using a box knife. Now go around, trim a little bit of the extra off here on the corners. And that's it, can do. It only has these three tabs. And now in order to get it off without having to pull all of them, it's a whole lot easier to open this bucket with just a couple tabs on it than it being all the way around. 
this is how you this is how you get the lid ready for this build so once again we're back again with our one and one quarter inch hole saw same thing so these screw into it and this will work as well but we're going to have one coming out for the outflow of the water one will be the overflow and then of course on the back we're going to have one that comes in from the spring dam that flows into it. So we'll drill these three holes. In the process of trimming this, you don't want to cut the hole any bigger than it is. You just want to take off the plastic shavings. So of course I'm going to use black polyethylene pipe coming out of the dam, let's say. So I screwed this fitting in. Now, if you have messed up, uh, you can always put silicone on the inside where you screw it out of the bucket or your dam wall or anything else. If you mess up, you can go get a rubber O-ring, auto parts store, Ace Hardware, something like that, inch and a quarter inside diameter, and it will fit over the fitting, and then you can screw it into the thing, and then the, the O-ring will help seal it. And then if you need to, this is a one-inch nut for um, electrical fittings, but you can get them in plastic. And then you can screw this on the outside with the bucket in between it. Of course, now you are losing all your threads to then attach a fitting on the outside, but the bu these buckets are fairly thin. Now let me show you the inside. So the water from your dam will be coming in here, and then you will have two things. You will have a piece of pipe, just like this, with holes drilled in it. This is the outflow line. This is the one going to your cistern tank right here. And should that tank get filled up or you gotten too much water, this is just the overflow that then comes out. It would come here. You'd attach another fitting to it and run it off on the side somewhere so it's out of the way or back over to the stream. And this one right here again, which is just a one inch hose barb, one inch female threads screws on the end of that fitting and you're done of course this right here we have a problem with it up here that we have a very fine sediment a real fine dirt so let me show you the answer to this thing but this right here is a pair of whole house filters you can buy them ace hardware any local thing you can get them on amazon i think these two are like ten dollars nine something a pair for two of them we use them, rinse them out, either reuse them or keep a spare dry set, go up, pull the dirty ones out, put the new ones in, take the other ones down the house and wash them. These are 20 micron filters. They also make a five micron filter. And uh, of course it says right here, it reduces sediment two times smaller than the eye can see. So these things will clog up easier than the five microns, but it'll take a lot more dirt out. You may have to change and recycle the filters. And two things, I'll show you what this thing looks like, but let me take you on the build of how to do it. We use these 20 or five micron filters, depending on how dirty and how much sediment you have in your water. But they used to slide right over top. This is three quarter inch, three quarter inch PVC pipe. And they used to slide right over it. You can barely get them in now. It's tough 
even harder trying to put them in the bucket. So you need to take a sharp box knife and trim away very small amounts on that inside ring. Somehow it didn't quite make the conversion between when we made them, when they sent them over to China to be made, the measurement didn't come out the same. But you trim off just a little bit and what it does, it slides right over the pipe. See? This will sit here. And then what you'll take, and just mark it right here, about a half inch above the filter. Mark it right there. And then what you want to do is just drill 10 holes or so all the way through between here and here that'll be inside that filter. And you'll make two of these pipes because you'll have two of these things in there. Let me go ahead and do that. So after you do it, these are two of them. Like I said, they will... Where do I and this is how they're gonna basically fit inside there. But of course, after you drill these holes in here, it'll be rough. You'll have to take your box knife and go over it. Clean them up, clean all the little burrs off. It just makes it easier for the filter to go in. Not that it matters. These are quarter inch holes I drilled. You just need something to drill a hole in there. Then what you wanna do is take like a screwdriver or something and go up and down on the holes just to scrape off any of the burrs that are in there. Okay now, in order to assemble the filter housing here, this is three quarter inch pipe and it'll fit in. This is a three quarter inch elbow, another piece of three quarter inch pipe, inch and a half long. Then it'll go to a T. It's a three quarter inch T all the way around. Another piece of pipe with the holes drilled in it. Another short inch and a half piece of three quarter inch pipe. And then this here is a three quarter inch inside to one inch outside, or it's known as a one inch reducer. And what this does, where this is screwed in the bucket, this will just let you go right into there. Do not glue any of this if you have to take it apart to clean it. It's a whole lot easier if it's not glued together. Then your filters will slide down over top of them, just like that. And then this, everything here fits right in the filter of the bucket. And this is what it'll look like complete. You have your overflow here, because it has to be lower than the in input. If you had a different bucket, you could trim part of this plastic webbing away on the outside and put the inlet hole higher. But the outlet's gonna have to be lower than that. And then you have your filters here. So now everything that goes in here will be a particle smaller than two times what you can see anyhow. And yes, they're going to be dirty about halfway up. A lot of times you can just take the filter off, turn it back over, or just take it off and take them down the house, rinse them out, and put them back in. But this is my adaptation. We do this on here and the Carolina water tanks to keep sediment and everything out of the tanks. It does this as a pre-filter. It's easier to clean out the spring box with sediment than it is to get inside your big cistern tank and try to clean it out. And this is the whole purpose of this thing. Well, that's the total build on this thing. And uh, they make commercially available boxes. The one big one around here is Carolina Water Tank. Um, they make it. This filter adaptation fits right in their box as well. So if you have one of their tanks and you want to upgraded if you want to call it that and pre-filter the water you can build this you can look at the 
video here. It'll tell you the three quarter inch pipe and the fittings you need. And you can actually put this in your tanks. So if you were to build this thing, well, first, if you were to buy it and it doesn't come with the filters from them, it's like $200. And yes, their tank's fancy. It's green. This is a white bucket. If it's going to be where sun can shine on it, you do better to paint it black or paint it dark green because that's how algae gets in your tank or anything else is if the sunlight can get in it. So yes, it is probably best if you go ahead and paint this thing a dark green or brown or some color. It would also camouflage it in the woods. But this is how hard it is to build. The filters are $10 and you don't have $10 in the rest of it. So for 20 bucks and a hole saw and a little bit of time, you can save yourself 180 bucks by building this thing. But if it helps you out, leave something in the comments. Let me know what it is. I'm playing with this new phone, trying to get the enlarging and tripod thing going on it. But if you like it, tell me about it. But like it, share it, subscribe, tell your friends about it. We're getting close to 4,000 subscribers. We'll get there sooner or later. It'd be nice to get there by the end of the year. I'll see you on the next one, part three. We'll be working on putting the whole system together and with the tank and the cistern. And then we're going to go to um, different ways. Part four will be pumping, whether it's solar pumps, centrifuge pumps, pumps submersible in the tank so they don't freeze or above it. But that's at least a four-part series I'm filming right now. Thank you for watching.